The state of Colorado has been doing pretty well in the sports world. You of course got Coach Prime with Colorado and they're the talk of the town right now. They're everywhere, they're the media darling, America's team. It's an event every single week when you watch them. They got guys like The Rock, Offset there, even Kawhi Leonard. What it do, baby? Yeah. And speaking of basketball, the reigning NBA champions are of course the Denver Nuggets who unanimously, I'd argue, have the best player in the entire league in Nikola Jokic. Sorry. Even in the world of the NHL, the Colorado Avalanche finished as the number one seed. Now, could I tell you what happened in the playoffs or name any players on their team? No, but it um it, it suits my agenda, all right? <laughs> but let's move to the NFL where you got the Denver Broncos who just recently lost 20 to 70. And the Broncos have been a terrible watch over the last year and a half, but this most recent one is now the new, 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 new. Worst game ever. I hate football and I hate everything goodbye. Now can we fix them, you may ask? Can we turn things around and make this team exciting? Can we finally just have a good off? Next question. Okay, well, one last question then. Could you guys like the video for me? That would be greatly appreciated. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, if you enjoy this type of content and enjoy the vid. Now this offense right here last season was a dumpster fire. I remember there being a crazy stat where if they just scored over more than 16 points, they would have won so many games because of how elite their defense was. But the offense overall was just miserable. I mean, Nathaniel Hackett was here. They traded for Russell Wilson, gave away some very valuable pieces like draft picks and some players as well. He's getting paid the big bucks. He was terrible. He was playing like his first name was Zach. And they were on so many primetime games as well because everybody thought they were going to be good and everybody saw how bad they were. <laughs> and before we go ahead and digest into this team and a little bit more if you don't know i am a dolphins fan so uh that game was pretty fun for me but i will say one thing right the broncos offense was not bad at all and i don't think they've been bad this season i think russ is actually you know he's not you know that prime seattle seahawks russ anymore but i think he's an above average qb still i think he's pretty solid overall and you know they were moving the chains down as well their defense just could not get a stop <laughs> i mean this guy is built different Speaking of Russ, though, you know, Danger Russ, Mr. Unlimited, Broncos Country, let's ride, Danger, Danger Witch, is that what, I don't even know what the hell this guy even goes by, but like I said, I don't think he's really the problem. What is the problem, though, is this, um, he's 33 years old now, right, like I said, he's kind of lost, you know, that lag, that little flair, that explosive escape artist ability that he had when he was in Seattle, right, in his prime, he's kind of lost a little bit of that, and that's what made him so great, and he is getting paid, like, he's still doing that, dude, that is so much, you know, <laughs> Super Bowl Chase Green. I don't know about that one, Madden, man. That combination, though, like I said, he's 34 years old. I thought he was 33, bro. But like I said, 34, start development, 79 overall, Madden rebuilds. Those things don't really go together, you know? And if we try to release him, we free up 8 mil, which ain't too shabby, right? But we incur a penalty of 82 freaking mil. Oh, jeez. Like, we genuinely might be stuck with this guy. Javante Williams is, of course, the RB1 here. Broncos franchise legend, if you know. I like Javante, man. I really do. Of course, he had that big injury last year. Was it an ACL? It was definitely, it was a season-ending injury, so they're still trying to ease him back in. I thought he looked pretty decent against the Dolphins as a whole. Obviously, the, the game script wasn't really in your favor. I'll stop bringing it up, but I still won't because it's kind of funny. Um, I like Javante, though. He's going to be RB1 franchise running back, if that's even a thing anymore. <laughs> franchise running back. Nope, take one in the later rounds and ride with it. I mean, shit. <laughs> Jerry Judy, or as I like to call him, Jerry Judy. We're all still kind of waiting for Judy to take that, you know, next step that we all know we can, right? Especially with the, the Alabama wide receiver core that he was with. Smitty boomed, Waddle boomed. Who's the other? Oh, the, oh, oh. <laughs> He's doing better than him. Judy just needs to find a rhythm, man. He's a crisp route runner as a whole. He's just kind of... It's been such a mess on the Broncos, right? Early on, and now you got Russell Wilson last year with Nathaniel Hackett. He's never just really had a good stretch of games. I'll do whatever it takes, though, Jerry. I will save you. Maybe. I mean, I don't really know. <laughs> Cortland Sutton has started off the season all right as well. He was getting pickpocketed, though, by Javon Holland. He was looking like probably Gary Payton out there. Marvin Mims Jr., or should I say Marvin Hims Jr.? Now, he started off quite nicely, right? Against the Commanders, he killed him deep. It looked like Prime Russ with the deep balls on the sideline. I think he had two touchdowns that game. Had a decent game against the Dolphins as well, all things considered. And he had a kick return, if I'm not too mistaken. I think it was, you know, a little Chris Paul-y, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but overall, I think it is a bright spot on this Broncos team. And Broncos fans will take any bright spots they can get right now. And I also just want to add, I feel so bad for Tim Patrick, bro. I think he's a very underrated wide receiver in this league. I think last year, I'm not saying he would have fixed everything. But I think he was going to play a big part of their offense. So him getting hurt, you know, kind of just hurt everything else. He got hurt again this season in training camp, I believe it was. Like I said, Tim Patrick, I think he's really underrated, man. It just sucks for the Broncos and him. This O-line on paper doesn't look too bad, but they, I know they do give up a lot of pressure. Broncos fans, let me know, is that more the O-line's fault or just Russ taking forever? <laughs> 
Because I know one guy is sick of it all. Right now, what are the emotions like going through your head, personally? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> now, the funny thing about this team is, last season, this defense was elite. And they didn't really lose anybody big besides their DC who went to Carolina. And now they got Vance Joseph. And he has kind of killed everything. And I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Broncos fans want his head already. And you can see why, right? They just gave up 70. I know it's the Dolphins, but still, that is inexcusable. He gave up 35 to Sam Howell, and they led a comeback in that game as well. They put up three points this week against the Bills, right? This is like, this is he's like the Matt Canada of the defensive side of the ball. <laughs> and what's even funnier is this defense is now performing like how their offense was last season. It's kind of just flip-flop, vice versa. Find a balance, man. <laughs> there definitely are still some bright spots, though. Starting with Patrick Sertan, PS2. Going into year three now, and he's still just 23 years old he's probably i think it's safe to say he's probably one of the best corners in the league already and if you said he is the best corner i wouldn't really even argue with you i think it's like him jair and probably jalen ramsey i'd still give him the edge because of his pedigree and reputation but ps2 is definitely him now did he get cooked by the chosen one maybe but you know what next question and if you thought seeing a team put up 70 was crazy, check this out. Yeah, this is definitely something you don't see every day. <laughs> Another star on this defense is, of course, their safety, Justin Simmons. And in my opinion, he's been one of the best safeties in the league for a while now. He didn't play against the Dolphins, and no, I'm not saying he would have prevented a 70-burger, but it definitely would have eased the pain with him back there. Now, he is 29 years old now. He's still 92 overall. His contract is up in just two years. I'm wondering, you know, what I'm going to do with it. Maybe we trade him and just try to get assets right now and... He's still going to have value being a superstar dev and 92 overall as well. Honestly, I have no idea what direction I'm going to go with in this rebuild. Because a part of me wants to trade absolutely everything but like Javante, Judy, and PS2. And just like completely reset. But then another part of me is like, this team maybe could do something. <laughs> Probably not, but you know. Also, Baron Browning, I think he's a really good player as well. I think he came alive when they traded Vaughn Miller a few years ago. And he didn't come out as a traditional pass rusher as well. He kind of gives me like a Micah Parsons vibe because he was like an off-ball linebacker. I'm not saying he's going to be Micah Parsons or is Micah Parsons. But, you know, maybe like uh, the first evolution of Micah Parsons. <laughs> we'll try to develop him the best we can, though. I think he's a good player. Drew Sanders they got in this last year's draft i think from arkansas or should i say arkansas he is star development or maybe superstar i don't know probably star though he's hidden development 72 overall just 21 years old he's probably going to be our main middle linebacker for this entire video we'll go ahead and give him the start the rest of the defense is all right. Randy Gregory's getting paid a bit, and I don't know if the production really is going to match that. Zach like Allen, they just brought in. He's cool. K1 Williams. Kareem Jackson's a walking targeting call. Like, I wouldn't mind trading Kareem Jackson and just starting Caden Stearns. I don't know. I don't know what to do with this team. <laughs> And before we forget, let's put Marvin Mims as our wide receiver three. Put him in the slot as well. And then let's make Drew Sanders the sub linebacker number one. I think our plan is going to be, you know, we're going to go to midseason and see how we're doing. If we're doing bad, then I probably will just sell the house. If we're fine, then I'll try to build up on it. Let's do some of these, though, and hopefully we can get a dev trait. Hello? The strengths of this class are wide receiver, corner, and right end. Two highly projected quarterbacks as well. I'll be honest, I have no idea. <laughs> there is a world we get to midseason and we're 0-7 and I tried everything and we're going to need a quarterback, right? But for now, let's get another cornerback alongside Riley Moss. Is he related to Randy Moss? Two star, I guess we'll do edge. Then we'll go DT, QB, and receiver. And I did fix the correct result for every game, so we will be 0-3. Midseason could be ugly. Although the Broncos got the Bears in week four. Clash of the movable object and the and the easily stoppable force. <laughs> okay, we're oh, <laughs> What do I do? <laughs> we're actually 0-7, you know. Oh my god. I don't guess we'll check out these QBs and see if they're anything special. Bryson Adkins, improviser, 21 years old out of Virginia Tech. Looks like a pretty solid athlete overall. Nothing spectacular though. And then his accuracy is okay as well. Under pressure is an A. Break sack A as well. But for now, we, we still just don't know too much. Brandon Bullo is from Oklahoma. Looks Key ratings look pretty good there. He's 6'5". He's massive. He's an improviser as well. He's a pretty good athlete himself. Pretty similar, and he is 6'5", so that definitely plays a part. QBs aren't bad. Okay, we're 0-7. Russ is 1,400 yards. Only eight touchdowns, five interceptions. Javante, 5.6 a carry as well. Is the defense just bad too? Do, do we have pressure? Randy Gregory, two and a half. You know what I'm saying? We might have to, we might have to get rid of some people, man. I mean, we're 0-7, obviously. <laughs> 
So how do you feel about being Owen? Next question. Corlin Sutton, we can save about three mil. He is 27 now. Justin Simmons, I probably will be trading. Same with Randy Gregory. I mean, this is the big one. Do I just bite the bullet and get rid of Russ? Simmons and Gregory can get me DJ Moore, White Teller, Hollywood Brown, and Trey McBride. Shaq Leonard, Tony Pollard, Christian Wilkins wouldn't be bad. Bryant Burns certainly would be kind of nice, you know. Whoa. Brian Burns. Question is, would I rather just have picks? The Vikings are actually interested in, they have pick number three right now. They'd be willing to deal it for Simmons and Judy. I don't want to trade Judy. Simmons, a future second, and then a 26 second. That's honestly not terrible. I feel like I'm going to regret trading those picks though. Why, why would I ever do this? <laughs> why would I move back to three and then give you guys more picks? <laughs> trying to finesse me, man. Can I get anything for Russ? The Bears, Jalen Johnson actually would be kind of nice in a third round pick. That's actually not that bad. You know, go over to Deron Payne. You know, maybe how in working out over there after he had his bozo game against the Bills. It's just all been downhill. Rashawn Douglas, JC. Okay, the, the Panthers, we could be cooking. We could be calling them up again here. They're giving me some nice deals. JC Horn and Pat Sertan, are you kidding me? That would be insane. Ah, I don't want to trade Russ to the Panthers, though. You know, they have, they have, they just got Bryce Young. I'm going to go talk with the commanders. They were offering Deron Payne, which would be nice, but what about some picks? They're actually pick 23 though, which isn't even that bad. Maybe I can get a little bit more though. Maybe we ask for like a third next year. I don't know. I'm just going to start off high. Actually yellow. Let's get rid of the third this year then. It's close. Would you like Tim Patrick maybe? Actually, that's yeah, that's not that bad. It's actually accepted. Okay, Russell Wilson and Tim Patrick are going to the Commanders. They have a really solid team. Looks like they are giving up on Sam Howell or maybe just, you know, letting him sit for another year. I don't know. I'm going to take it, though. We're going to bite the bullet. The cap hit's going to kill us for the next year or so, but I think it has to be done. We're freaking 0-7 with him. <laughs> Justin Simmons, Greg Newsome, and a third, and even more picks. That is really enticing already. I can't lie. Shaq Thompson here, Kyle Duggar, Rashad Bateman, Boya Mafe, Lewisine. Ah, I don't want to do it, but at the same time, it's, it's kind of wild. But you give me your second this year and your second next year? Maybe a third in 2026 as well. I don't know. We'll just start off there. It's accepted. Okay, I'm, I'm rather just going to take the picks. I don't want to go crazy for players. I'm just going to dump them off to the Browns, who already have one of the best defenses in the league and now add one of the best safeties. I think it's a win-win on both sides. And we will take them picks. Who wants Randy Gregory, Shaq Lawson, Deron Harmon, Chuck Clark? Okay, these are nasty. Actually goes through. Okay, we're sending Randy Gregory, Josie Jewell, and Kareem Jackson here to Minnesota. Getting a future 2025 second and third round pick. Dude, I might even do like Sutton and Bowles, man. We might literally just go all out. I might actually do this. Sutton, Bowles, and Frank Clark. We're going to send them to the Jets for John Franklin Myers, who I actually traded for in my Broncos franchise. Um, if you guys remember way, way back, it was a long time ago. Yeah, we're doing that. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure this is the third season in a row. The Broncos have had made some noise at the trade deadline. I think two years ago was Vaughn Miller. Last year was Bradley Chubb of the Dolphins. This year, everybody. <laughs> and we have minus 15 mil because of the Russ cap hit. Luckily, though, they're... Why is Frank Clark still here? Didn't I just, didn't I just trade you, bro? Yeah, luckily, though, there's really no... Okay, no, it's a fifth year option. <laughs> My heart kind of dropped. <laughs> and we got... Why is Garrett Bowles still here? Did it not go through? Didn't I just trade you, man? Sutton and... Did it just not go through? Now it's McCall Hardman. I don't want McCall Hardman. What the heck? Nah, man. Give me John Franklin Myers, please. We don't feel we could afford to move a player at the position. Okay. Don't tell me what to do. We'll go sign some quality backups, though. Oh, the one-on-ones in practice with PS2 are going to be a movie. This guy just had the coolest name. All right, we're back here, and now this trade... Has been accepted. Okay, why? <laughs> How old is Jonathan Cooper? 25? I would rather Nick Benito start there. And hopefully him and Browning can just develop. All right, let's go to week 11 and uh, get some private workouts. We're now 0-8. Wouldn't be surprised if we somehow lost on our bye week. 0-9. <laughs> Weekly award winner, though. Oh, we're in week 11. And shout out to... Uh... I'm here to tell you right now. We don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you. <laughs> we don't care. Jerry. Now that we don't have Russ, we're probably going to put two of these on the quarterbacks. And the third one, let's do Eric Pierman. He looks like a really good corner out of BYU. And we actually just ended up going 0-17. 
I'm glad that I traded away the whole team. I know it might seem a little crazy, you know, giving up all those people, but look, it's better to do it a year too early and just bite the bullet rather than a year too late. 0-17. I'm doing the 0-17-17-0 to no challenge, guys. Broncos country, let's hide. Stidham came in, and honestly, he was doing better on the bench. My God. <laughs> Dude, Javante was actually really good, though. 1150 yards, 4.7 to carry, as well as 8 touchdowns. That's a good year. Receiving-wise, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for you guys. Judy, Dulcich, Marvin Mims... The chosen one. Oh, Drew Sanders, 135 tackles, though. Five TFLs, two sacks as well for him. Baron Browning, six and a half sacks. Franklin Myers got involved. Oh, I, I don't know if I checked the specialist after I made some of those trades. 18 TFLs for Zach Allen, 14 for John Franklin Myers. Interceptions, two for Drew Sanders, two for Sertan, and literally none for anybody else. Yeah, that was, um, that was some first season. <laughs> Josh Dobbs' son wins MVP. Here we go! Against CD Lamb. This time, CD Lamb. Are we coach of the year? Nah, come on. Ooh, Drew Sanders, defensive rookie of the year. Ahead of guys like Christian Gonzalez, Will Anderson. Okay, he could go up to superstar then, right? Joe Burrow, best quarterback. Do they know? <laughs> I don't know why I'm showing off him being seventh. Huh? Dev traits, is there even a point <laughs> to even check this out? Anything? On the offense, no. Mims would have been nice. Javante would have been nice. He honestly maybe could have. Drew Sanders, however, goes up to superstar development. Zach Allen goes up to superstar development as well. And Fabian Moreu for... Can I get to him? Somehow goes up to star as well. Sure. <laughs> Got a rematch of last year's Super Bowl here. The Chiefs win it again, though. 21-14. Super Bowl MVP goes to Mahomes, but probably should be Taylor Swift. We do not care. Sertan, fifth year option, sure. Career win percentage, 0%. Thanks. You didn't have to. T Honestly, I'm not going to sign anybody, though. Just going to ride with this awesome team. <laughs> Age 95, but who is this guy? Drew Bell. Out of New Mexico State, 6'6", six, six, strong arm, 22 years old. No. Do you wear This dude looks terrible. But Bolo, we know, is around 1 to 2 now. Bryson Atkins, 95% is just a little bit of pain. He is 21, though. Elite strength, good throw power, good acceleration, agility, elite change of direction, good jumping. Okay, Combine did pretty good as well. This guy might be more of a project. He is younger, though, so it makes sense. He might be the more fun option, you know? How was that cornerback that we did? Round one? Okay. This guy looks sick as well. Julius Lincoln, 6'4". Ooh, round, one, round three to four. And he is around one to two talent. You will be on my big board for sure. Cliff Sherman, son of Richard Sherman here. He's a DB as well. Free safety, though, out of Penn State. Might put one of my private workouts on him. We do need a free safety after trading away Justin Simmons, of course. There's a massive hole there. He's going to be number one. Going to be doing Von Buckner, a right tackle as well. We need help there after, of course, trading away Garrett Bowles. <laughs> Now, there's a few good receivers in this class as well. Nicholas Whitaker is one. Lawrence Riddick. Clint Glover here out of LSU. He's a 6'5 slot. And then we got Glenn Craig as well. And I think for me, the one that caught my eye the most is going to be Clint Glover. So the third one's going to go to him. And you know, something I want to start doing for the draft is when it gets to my pick, I actually kind of want to have a running clock. So I just, you know, feel a little bit of pressure because sometimes I'd be taking forever with the picks. And I, I don't know. I kind of don't like it. At the same time, though, I wish you could make it more than two minutes, right? That is kind of a rush if, you know, I'm looking to trade up or something. But I don't know. We'll, we'll give it a go here. So I made sure to favorite every player that I am interested in. I think I'm going to do it only with my pick, though. So if it's another team's picks, then because it usually goes in like 20 seconds. Seconds and I don't really like that. I'm on the clock already. Okay, we got one in 12 here. I need to make sure I even know what picks I have because I traded a bunch of stuff. We have 112, 17 in the second round, 25. Okay, at this pick, do I go Bryson Adkins? Maybe we trade out and try to get some trade tra draft capital and, you know, um, some team can come up and get that wide receiver. Are the Cardinals here? They're not here. Oh, this is scary. Only a minute 30 to go. Why can't you see the timer here? Okay, Cardinals. We're going to try to trade down to pick number two. I'm panicking. I'm panicking. How about you just give me a future third and maybe a future fourth as well? Nothing crazy, right? Nothing crazy. Okay, it's accepted. Sweet. Jeez, you see, you see what I mean? This got me a little tense, you know? It's just a freaking draft. Please take the wide receiver. They do take Paul Roth in at number two. We're going to go ahead and take the quarterback, also known as Bryson Adkins, who we've had on our board for a minute now. Unfortunately, he is not 100% scouted, but we do know a good amount about him already. We interviewed him as well. He had good interviews. He's got a good personality, a good work ethic. I like everything about this guy. I think he can be the franchise guy in a Denver Broncos uniform. Out of Virginia Tech, Bryson Adkins is hidden development. Has 91 throw power, 92 change of direction despite being 6'3", 230 as well with 85 agility, 87 acceleration. Yo, 
I'm actually quite excited about this guy. I think he could change the franchise. Let's go. You know, since Peyton Manning, we have had nothing but bad luck at quarterback. The, the Patriots just went freaking Drew Bell. It only takes 20 seconds, though, for them to pick. Okay, we're at pick 12 now. Who do I have favorited? Yo. Yo. What is this cheese? Okay, Bolo, obviously, we do not want. I'm not going to lie. That safety right here, I'm tempted. Marco Fuller, he's out of Alabama as well. We're, we've seen how good Brian Branch is in the last year's draft. I don't know how he fell to the second round. He looks elite already. Marco Fowler could be a similar story, you know? Everybody in the draft process this time around is like, don't let that guy fall. Buckner, we might need Buckner. Oh, he's only 90%. Wait, who did I even private work out? I don't even know. It was Pierman we got. What about the receiver? What receiver did I do? Why did this all get messed up? He's only 95. No. Okay, we got 45 seconds remaining. I'm all over the place. What, what about that safety that I did? Cliff Sherman, he's 90%. A tackling. A everything else, you know. 35 seconds. Okay, he's got B awareness as well. I, I mean, we can get this guy later on, though, I think, right? I honestly, I might just screw my favorites board. We're going to go Marco Fowler out of Alabama. 22 years old. Like I said, Brian Branch. Eddie Jackson, I guess, is another safety. This guy is going to be our Justin Simmons replacement. He's a highly projected player as a safety, which is pretty crazy as well. Physical ratings, good, 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 solid, good, solid. I did that from down to up, if you're confused. Combine was pretty good as well, though. Yeah, I have no time to switch it, so Marco Fowler. I should have went with the tackle. I should have went with the tackle. I should have went with the tackle, but hopefully he's just a high overall and it'll ease the pain a little bit. Pierman's number 10, but remember, we have that guy like round three to four that we can get later on, and I, I'm sure he'll be just fine. You know what? We're just going to go to the second round, pick 17. I'm not going to trade up for anybody, and we're on the clock again. Okay, Riddick is actually still here. He was projected, like you see, round one to two there. Got this guy. We, we have 17, and then we have third, 25 in the third round, so this is our... Last pick in a minute. Is Riddick anything special? Good jumping, great strength, solid good there, great. I did that in the most random order you can. There's so many letters here, I don't even know what to look at. The Angelo Irons looks all right as always. Run three to four though. Got this center later on as well. I think I'm gonna go Riddick. I think we're gonna do a wide receiver here. Get our wide receiver three alongside Mims and Judy and just get as much help for our rookie quarterback as possible. This guy's more of, the, of a jump ball guy, contested catch guy, go up and grab it that we don't really have, right, with Judy and Mims. So pick number 17 here in the second round. We're going to go Lawrence Riddick. He actually ends up being hit in development as well, which is awesome to see. 89 jumping. Speed is 90 as well as acceleration for being 6'4". 92 change direction too. This dude's actually a monster. That's literally a replica of Cortland Sutton. <laughs> and now I think I'm going to trade up a tiny bit just to make sure we get that corner. This third rounder, a fifth round pick, and then we, oh my god, we have so many picks next year. Guess we can just try a fourth right now. It's accepted. All right, perfect. Bro, this is a rush though, you know what I mean? With a timer on, it is scary, dude. Next, Nick Milne I had on my draft board as well. I don't think all O-lines really are biggest need though. Um, maybe left tackle, but I decided to just... You know, take that next year. We're going to go Brian Campbell here in round three. Trade it up to get our man. He looks really good. We know he's around one to two talent as well. He's a solid athlete overall. Combine was decent as well, but we know he's going to be a good rating. That's all I'm asking for. I'll be happy with anything. He is only normal development, unfortunately, but he's out of Florida State, which is a nice DB school. So welcome to the squad. And then in round four now, we did lose um, Cushionberry in free agency we did not resign him so we're gonna go chris burnham here who's a day three projection great acceleration great agility great change of direction solid speed and strength there this guy doesn't look bad especially for a day three guy fourth round pick number 11 and he's gonna be the guy under center for our new quarterback and he's a hidden development as well you love to see that all right yo with the timer on i think we've done pretty well you know our first timer on draft and i think we did well adkins is a 72 overall fowler this was the only pick I was like, dang, that was a reach. 74 overall and normal as well. Riddick is a 74. Campbell is a 74. And then our new center is a 74 as well. Four 74 overalls there. CPU did nothing. Check out the class. Dude, Bell was a 66. They replaced Mac Jones with the worst Mac Jones. <laughs> Paul Roth, the win number one. They traded up for him and he's only normal. Holy crap. Imagine there was another universe where I kept Russ and we got Paul Roth at number one overall. That would have been terrible. Bryson Atkins, we can check him out as one. 91 throw power. He's got 90 throw on run. Under pressure is decent. Short accuracy, 84. Deep is 78 there. Medium is not bad. Break sack at an 84 too. And he's a great athlete out the gate. You love to see that. 85 juke move too. Wow. Highest rated player in the class is Paul Roth. Lincoln, who we have.
bad. We had an eye on him as well. He goes with the Titans. Could have easily went him at number 12. Instead, I went with that safety. The only star, though. This class as a whole really wasn't anything too special, though, to be honest with you. Actually, you know, we might as well just check out what is he actually hitting to have at least. No, this dude, this dude just sucks. The Patriots suck at drafting the first round, though. Nothing changes. Okay, and we hop in year two now with a little bit of a spark, a little bit of excitement, you know. We've got some young players. Adkins is now here. We got Riddick with a, a decent wide receiver group as well, you know, with all the skill position. Javante, Greg Dulcich is still young as well. O-line doesn't look too bad besides left tackle, which is quite struggling, I can't lie. But it's an exciting team, which is, um, I think Broncos fans will take that right now. John Franklin Myers is still here as well. We got Campbell, Riley Moss, got our new safety in five who I'm gonna make a free safety oh, this was the only pick I wasn't too happy about but hopefully you can develop into a beast so he's there now we still got browning and then we're gonna start bonito of course at midseason we are three and four I did no schemes or playbook changes as well and you know what that's three more wins than last year gonna be looking primarily at offensive tackle this year oh I also have 278 staff points we probably could have revealed somebody but we're at midseason already who cares let's see how our players are Riddick is a superstar okay unfortunately adkins is only a star but that's all right burnham is also a star and then on defense did we even have one on defense i don't think we did riddick being a superstar is huge now begs the question do i start him over marvin mims already i think we gotta do it man oh look at all the money we got now 118 mil okay judy's here javante's here quinn myers baron browning okay a lot of good players are here that we're gonna have to pay problem is none of them want to stay here <laughs> judy scheme fit franchise quarterback no income tax blah 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 how about i just give you more money buddy and a five-year deal dang Javante, who was actually awesome last year as well, definitely would love to keep him around. I'm going to bump up the deal quite a bit here, and hopefully he should join with us. He's excited to stay. Quinn Miner is another guy that's um, a big part of my future. He's staying as well. And then Baron Browning, who does not want much at all, will bump it up even more. He should stay with us. He's also back. And Caden Stearns actually has interest in joining. Shout out to Caden Stearns, man. You're, you're a real one. We're now four and four. I forgot who we just played there. I think it was it was the Chargers, right? They're seven and oh. We just beat the Chargers. I think we did. I don't know. We're now five. We're finding a little, little, a little bit of heat here, you know. Remember that we have a ton of draft picks this year as well. Gabe Clinton. I, I haven't seen much. I'm gonna do him already. Tavon Reynolds out of Alabama here looks like a really good pass rusher. Corner Greg Lowell round two to three projection looks pretty sick. Week 18, and we end up finishing eight and nine, which actually is not a bad record at all. I'm not mad at all. 26 in offensive yards is not great. I didn't change any playbooks, like I said. Okay, defense was still trash as well. Um, Bryson Adkins in year one had 3,335 yards, 22 tuds, 12 picks. Pretty average a rookie year. Javante, once again, was a beast, though. 4.5 a carry, over 1,200 yards, and eight touchdowns. That's why he got the new contract. Receiving-wise, yeah, it's pretty ugly here. This playbook sucks. 700 for Judy. Riddick got 700 as well mims also with 700 there dosage 568 drew sanders 123 tackles eight tfls for him but john franklin myers leads the way with 18 there benito with 13 two more guys in the double digits and then sack numbers franklin myers had a decent year you know seven for him benito six and a half zach allen six baron browning only with four unfortunately but look at the pick numbers four for drew sanders brian campbell the rookie two for fowler the rookie riley moss or ten also had two we had a ton of interceptions what kind of Super Bowl is that? <laughs> Mahomes wins MVP. Boring. But can we see anybody for offensive or defensive rookie of the year? Goes to Nicholas Whitaker. Adkins is number two. Riddick is number three. Those would have been huge for either of them to go off a dev trade. And then Eric Pierman, who was on our draft board, I think he was a corner there, wins defensive rookie of the year. Campbell at three there. Fowler at five. Kind of sucks. We didn't really light up the stat sheets, though, so it kind of makes sense. Got no dev upgrades on the offense, if I'm not mistaken. Defensively, though, John Franklin Myers up to superstar, Benito up to star, and Marco Fowler, the 12th overall pick in the draft, goes up to star as well as Brian Campbell, the rookie corner that we got in the third round, I believe, that we traded up for. I'll take those defensive upgrades all day long. The Panthers ended up winning the Super Bowl. Remember, I almost made like two massive trades with them in year one to get Brian Burns and JC Horn, I believe. Miles Sanders, Super Bowl MVP. They beat the Patriots 35-27. I was hoping Adkins would maybe get the tag after this year, the franchise quarterback tag. It looks like we're just kind of have to pay Judy a lot, and I'm willing to do so. I think he can be the guy here. And then P. Ryan Cooper, DJ Jones, Tonga. 
They can all walk. And what are we really looking for in free agency? I think skill position is all good. Maybe a backup running back. And then left tackle, I'm really keyed in on that guy in the draft. I think he looks insane. Defensive tackle, maybe another corner, safety depth, linebacker depth as well. Maybe even an edge. Even though these guys went up to star, they're still pretty low overalls. All right, we're hopping in with about 70 mil. Nick Chubb is here. Look who's here. Justin Simmons. That's why we traded him early instead of too late. You know, Greg Noose, Keenan Allen, Josh Uche, Jabro Peppers. Some solid names here. Kind of drops off after that. Shout out Gary Bowles. Huh. Perfect example, though, of why we traded them while we could. You know, got some valuable assets. They were going to walk anyway, and our team's been trash. Justin Simmons, we put in an offer for. He does want to join us back, but the commander's offered him a ton of money, so I'm not sure if we're going to get him, but we'll offer and just see what he says. Josh Uche would be the big grab of this free agency. Armstead would be nice as well. And then Kayvon Walls and Gus Edwards for just to be a backup on this team. Let's go ahead and evaluate the first day. Every single player is gone, and we... Only got three. It's going to be Armstead and then Wallace and Edwards. Unfortunately, no Justin Simmons and Josh Uche, which was honestly the big one that I wanted. Simmons does end up going to the Commanders and Uche goes to the Bears. And, you know, to be honest with you, I don't think I'm going to do much else in Fridge. So let's just keep the money right now and, you know, be flexible for the future. There's nothing else I really want. All right, private workout time. We do have some sick players that I went ahead and favorited. This guy's only round one to two, unfortunately, but we do have some banger players later jimmy peterson another tackle he's 95 percent but look at these physical ratings elite acceleration great agility elite 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 and then decent strength there he is a round one talent as well i'm tempted to do um a private work on him as well just to get it at 100 greg lowell by the way he will 100 percent be a bronco he looks unreal elite acceleration great jumping good speed great strength as well and as you can see a catching b zone b man as well b press beast in the second round and yeah, check this out. Wayne Kelly, punter out of Tulane. Look at this. Good acceleration. Elite, 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 elite everything else. Combine, he literally finished first. He ran a 4-5-3 as a punter. We might have just found the next Pat McAfee, bro. Now for private workouts, we are going to do Jimmy Peterson. We're going to do... We know Lawal is going to be good. Like, I'm going to go on already. I'm going to do Fitzgerald. Charles Barkley is now a running back. 5'9", 350 it should be. <laughs> Last one, I'm just going to throw it on the safety. I don't know. <laughs> all right, draft board is all good. We should be fine here. Let's go ahead and go to the draft. Where we're going to have pick number 15. Saints are the number one overall pick. We have 15, and then we have, in the second round, we have 4, 15, and 24. All right. Am I going to have to trade up to get this guy? Did I not private work on him? Did it glitch out, bro? It glitched out. I didn't private work out anybody. What the heck? Bro, oh, this game. <laughs> yeah, well, that's annoying. There goes that guy. I'm going to sim to, like, the cart, and there he goes. There he goes. Now I'm in trouble. I'm just going to sim to my pick, honestly. Thing is, I could get this guy later on and move him to left tackle. This dude looks really good. Brian Sykes, he's around 2-3 to three projection as well. I could do that. But then what the heck do I do with this pick? <laughs> We only got 45 seconds remaining. I'm going to try to trade out maybe. And I would be fine with trading all the way out here. We can get a first, second, and a third next year from the Buccaneers. Dude, I don't. I know I don't have much time. You can't see it here. That is so dumb. First, second, third from the Lions. I'm going to do the one with the Bucks. I, I got no more time. Lowell and Sykes are way later down the board. Oh my God, I have a million third round picks. I'm just going to go with them right now and play it safe because we saw our other guys go really quick. Greg Lowell to be our maybe third string cornerback, maybe fourth. Maybe we'll play around, may move somebody to safety. I don't know. This guy looks really good. You guys have seen all his ratings. Welcome to Squad. Hidden development out of Clemson. Still just 21 years old as well and trades one orange jersey for another. 95 acceleration. Holy crap. Okay, we now have pick 15. Let's go ahead and take Brian Sykes. Just play it safe right now and take the guy we want. We're probably going to have to move him to tackle or maybe somebody else there. I don't know. Someone's got to play there, but he is. I don't know what I almost just said there. He is hidden development out of Notre Dame as well. Perfect big white guy at school. <laughs> okay, there's only 55 seconds remaining. I'm going to try to shop this second overall pick. I don't actually, I don't know why I went this way, to be honest with you. Can we get a good player? It doesn't look like it. <laughs> we have 30 seconds. We're going to get a second round pick next year from the Commanders. Okay, and with all of these third round picks, I'm just going to go with best player available that I see. First one's going to be a backup tight end behind Dolcich. Maybe even starts over him if he's a good development train. Quincy, Quincy Wesley here out of Georgia looks like a monster. Hidden Dev, there's a chance he could boom. 91 agility is crazy. Okay, I'm running out of time here. 15 seconds. I'm going to go Dalton Schwartz. He's a left guard. If we ever need cover anywhere, he could probably play there for us. 
Hell of a pick by me, you know. <laughs> okay, I've had this linebacker on my big board. I'm just going to take him now. 21 years old out of Texas Tech. He looks like a monster. Great, good, solid elite jumping and speed there. Really good combine first in the 40. Bench press, vert jump. A awareness, A zone, B hit power. This dude is a beast here and an absolute gem later in the third round. Welcome to squad. I'm, okay, we're actually going crazy in this draft. That's like three, four hittings already in a row. I haven't got one normal, right? Left end, Ramon Nickerson. Looks pretty solid ratings, combine as well. Just need depth at defensive line as a whole, so he will be my pick here. And unfortunately, it's our first normal of this draft. We got one more pick to go, though. You guys already know. Actually, we got two. And in the fifth round, we're going to go with Mr. Wayne Kelly. The generational punter, it looks like. Honestly, I'm pretty sure this guy's going to be hitting dev. I mean, these are just insane ratings and combines and skills. Honestly, everything is so, so elite. Wayne Kelly, generational punter, 94 jumping, 97 kick power, 86 speed. Holy crap, welcome. We actually have back-to-back -back picks as well, 14 and 15. And with this one, we're going to go back-to-back -back special team, guys. We got um, our punter. Now we're going to get our kicker, Todd Richardson. He's got good kick power, elite agility and change the direction if that matters who cares b kick accuracy too and oh my god this might be the best draft class of all time 92 kick power he also has the same face as our punter they come out as a package <laughs> what is this draft dude i'm kind of doing well with the timer on you know i thought it was gonna um fluster me a little bit more remember we traded our first round pick here and we ended up grabbing lowell in the second round he's a 77 overall and hidden sykes is a 75 wesley the backup tight end 75 already schwartz 74 bartnett 72 nixon's all right but wayne kelly is a 74 overall todd richardson is actually only a 67 but he's hidden dev so that's actually kind of surprising <laughs> draft class okay the two left tackles that i was willing to trade up for let's see what they are texans don't you already have Lermy tunsil too why the heck do you need this guy he was a superstar that's the guy that's the guy i did love i didn't know he was around one to two projections so that kind of you know had me lost a little bit okay but this was the guy i was going to take so thank god i didn't trade up man everything happens for a reason check out the ratings 80 overall center goes to the packers holy crap mcbath here 78 overall and lowell was a top five talent in the class i didn't even have to know i was going to choose him anyway here's fitzgerald who i wish my private workout went on because I did do him. It just didn't follow through for some reason. I don't know. He went at five. Could I have traded for him potentially? But is he only a star? Yes. Look at Wayne Kelly. 74 overall fifth round up here with all these other players. <laughs> so we did absolutely awesome in that draft. And we got ourselves more draft capital this year. We have a first from Tampa. We have actually two seconds from Tampa and Washington there. We have third rounders from Tampa and the Browns. We have so many picks. And I think this might be the year where we go all out. We're in year three now. We have made some big changes. We have gone to West Coast spread as well as a base 4-3. So changing from a 3-4 to a 4-3. I'm going to be trying the Falcons playbook. Not really sure how that's going to be, but I, it's done me well before. And then we'll try out Buffalo defense. And this is the offense. It looks actually pretty nice. We got a sick receiver group. We're going to make Riddick our number two, of course, because of that superstar development. I might consider using my reveal on Wesley just so we know what he is, maybe. Because if he is a superstar, I will um, start him over Dosage. We got we moved Sykes to left tackle as well. O-line's looking nice. We even got Schwartz as a backup. That's awesome. That is awesome. We all, like I said, we changed to a 4-3. So Benito's on the defensive line now. John Franklin Myers, we moved inside. Burn Brunning going to stay at linebacker, though. Just kind of play that hybrid role. Then we got Barnett outside. Fowler's here. Lowell, let's make him CB2. This team looks awesome. Can't forget the duel of Richardson and Kelly as well. Do I even have enough to reveal? Yeah, we do have enough. We just have enough as well. We have 61. Oh, no, it's 30. Oh, we could do Lowell. But, like, I'm going to get him at midseason. So, like, he's going to start. He's our CB2 already, too. I'm going to do Wesley. I'm going to do our tight end. That might feel like kind of a waste, but I just kind of want to see if I want to start him right away. Quincy Wesley at tight end is... Okay, mid-season mark, and we are going to be 3-3, three and three, third in the division, just, you know, kind of mid-table. Don't know why I said mid-table. Okay, dev traits. Let's go check them out. We got... Richardson Sykes is a superstar. Okay, that was the perfect choice then. Because remember, I was going to trade up, get that normal left tackle at number three. Instead, we get Sykes in the second round, and he's a superstar development. That is awesome. Defensively, we had a ton over here. Lowell, only a star. He was the big one. Barnett, only a star as well. Okay, it's kind of pain. The CPU got me this guy. Shout out to him. Special teams. Not yet. Players ready to negotiate. We got Sertan. We got John Franklin Myers. Zach Allen is here. Dulcich is here. 
Eric Arm said as well, we have a, we have so much money. Certain is orange interest, historic champs, but warm weather state and our win record, which we're not going to talk about right now. Yeah, we'll give you all the money in the world because you are the best corner in the league. So I absolutely don't mind. John Franklin Myers going up to superstar also is amazing. So we definitely want to keep him around. He's 87 overall as well. Best player on our D-line and doesn't want to join back. Zach Allen, he's only an 80 overall, but he is superstar dev. I'm just going to try to give him what he wants, see what he says. He's excited to stay. I can't complain. Those such we're going to wait on. Same with Bonito. Same for everybody else, honestly. And of course, being at the midseason mark, we can still make trades here. We're pick 16 currently. The Bucks looks like they're doing pretty good. 26 there. Commanders are 50 as well. Could we make a splash here? If I was to trade our first round pick and maybe we'll add in even a second rounder as well, we have a plethora of picks. What could we get? Uche, who we tried to get in free agency. Would have been nice. Milano, Logan Wilson, who are like the same player, to be honest with you. And Joku, Vita Vea. I know he's 30 years old now, but it's Vita Vea. You know what I mean? Trent McDuffie, Michael Pittman. We got some names here. Christian Wilkins, Dallas Goddard, Tony Ford. This guy's a superstar. He was on my draft board the other year. Buckner, this guy was on my board too. Remember, he's only a normal. Thank God we didn't get him either. Paul Webb, Trayvon Walker, former number one overall pick. Garrett Wilson, holy Ika McGuanu. Yeah, there's some decent freaking players here. Our own line is awesome. I think we need edge. We need edge really badly. But Benito and Browning, as decent as they are, that's kind of all they are. I'm thinking maybe somebody like Montez Sweat. No offers for Montez Sweat, though. All right, we'll keep him in mind, but we'll shop for somebody else for now. Sorry, Broncos fans. <laughs> Somebody like Josh Sweat, 88 overall. Okay, come on. I have so many picks. Like, you gotta want something, right? Jordan Love's on the Jets now. Brian Burns does have offers, but yeah, they, they want the house. <laughs> but I will keep him in mind. Whoa, the Saints. Bolo, was he a superstar off the gate? Remember, it was either him or Adkins, right? Bolo's a superstar. I didn't even check him out. Alex Highsmith would be interesting. 28 years old. He's 89 and superstar... I feel like that who want me meme right now. Daniil Hunter, he's 30, so there should be something here. This would be the Buccaneers pick. See, these these are not too bad. Okay, Daniil Hunter, we definitely have offers for. I would ideally, though, want someone a little younger. So let's go back to the Commanders. I think Josh Sweat is at the top of my board, or top of my list, I guess. We'll try pick number 26. It's already yellow. We should be able to get this done pretty easily. Let's throw in a third round pick. Close. How about another third round pick? very close future sixth round pick and it should be accepted we have made our splash once again at the trade deadline the broncos are getting um becoming a little bit famous for doing that now montez sweat 86 overall superstar dev and is now going to be our edge one week eight versus kansas city looks like we lost i don't know okay now we're on a losing streak though lions can we pick it back up they're only two and seven to go to week 11 we did win why did they get rid of being able to see the scoreline at the top? What was the point of that? Not gonna lie, this guy looks unbelievable. Scotty Church. If he's, if I can get him, maybe, and if we do bad this year again, <laughs> it's an option. First one, I'm gonna do Travis McIntosh here, left end out of Bama. Slap another one on Kieris Kindle, defensive tackle, Penn State. And then safety, Paul Williams out of Florida has caught my eye as well. And unfortunately, we miss out on the playoffs again, only finishing nine and eight as well. My team ranks, it looks like our pass yards per game and rush yards per game were actually elite, but for some reason we put up no points. We just were stopped in the red zone every time, I guess. Disappointing. Once again, offensive yardage, we were second. Second in the league. 17th in defensive yards, though. What kind of mid stats are these, Bryson Adkins? Oh my god. Under 4K yards, 19 touchdowns, 13 picks. Did he improve? Not really. Not really after year one. So did Javante just go crazy? Our whole Gus went crazy. Bryson Atkins actually ran a ton. What the heck? 1,400 yards for Javante there. 4.7 again and 13 touchdowns. He had a great year. Judy, almost 1,200 yards. Five touchdowns for him. Riddick, 923. Dulcich, 721. Mims, 570. Just disappointing through the air, which I, I guess I did go Falcons playbook, so it kind of makes sense. <laughs> John Franklin Myers, 21 sacks there. Montez Sweat had 16 sacks, 15 tackle for losses after that. Oh, my God. After that, we had absolutely zero pressure, even with the addition of Montez Sweat, who's getting so much attention, you know, from um, coordinators. Nobody else could capitalize off that. 
That is ridiculous. And we had no interceptions as well. What happened? Last year we had so many. What a bad year, bro. This this QB has not shown me anything. I'll be honest. <laughs> I can understand your rookie season being a little underwhelming, but to not see any improvements in year two is quite concerning. You already boring. If you want an elite athlete, just name your kid Charles Barkley. It looks like he's offensive rookie of the year defensive. It's Calvin Hodges. Calvin Hodges. Lowell, number eight. Best QB. Our guy's not even going to be in here, is he? Yeah, dude, he, he might just not be that guy, you know? Like, has he put up 20 touchdowns, you know? It's not been great for him. It's not been great for him. Oh, uh, looks like we got nothing on offense, unfortunately. Riddick is still a superstar. He's kind of developing a little slow. So Javante should definitely have gone up to superstar by now, to be honest with you. Defensively, Montez Sweat, I believe, was a superstar. I don't think we got anybody else. Special teams. How, how, how? And the Raiders are Super Bowl winners. 38-14, they beat the Packers. Their Super Bowl MVP goes to Nate Hobbs. Who, who even are the QBs of this team? It was Jimmy... G nope, it was William Cardona versus Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins went to the Packers. He did the reverse uh, Brett Favre. They were having a mid-off, though, to be honest with you. That's such a random Super Bowl. Okay, negotiations. We still got to get Franklin Myers back. Offer him a fat... Actually, he, he barely had any sacks this year, but he's still a really good player. I, I trust next year he's going to boom again. Really? You are not getting money like that from somebody else. Those are going to let walk, but Needle, I think I'm going to let walk as well. Same with Armstead. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and franchise tag Franklin Myers. 24 and a half mil, but we do have a ton of money we still have 100 mil after that so we're chilling I, I might have to go crazy this free agency please be some blue chip names 100 mil on the dot to spend ronnie stanley's here betonio Traverius ward tommy townsend it just falls off after that there's nobody here man what do i want freaking jake camarda even like a, a qb here honestly i probably would have went crazy on it but there's it's sam freaking how honestly let's give ronnie stanley a fat deal ronnie stanley dorrance armstrong for a backup same with trey mcbride elijah moto everything here is just a backup besides ronnie stanley of course and then we can move the guy we drafted back to his original position which was left guard ronnie stanley is a new Denver Bronco. That is a huge signing. The cream of the crop of this free agency class. Malik Harrison, why are you being so difficult, bro? You're, you're the I'm the only offer you got. Thank you. Oh, no way. They're both superstar. I drafted a superstar punter and kicker back to back. <laughs> That's crazy. I could just move Zach Allen to defensive tackle on the defensive line. Pff, looks pretty good. Got backup safeties now as well. DB room is deep. Schwartz is only a star, unfortunately. We got David's price, if you were wondering. Whoa. Top five talent, Travis McIntosh, round one to two projection. Okay. Not gonna lie, I'm throwing one on Scotty Church, dude. What do we even need? I feel like this team is awesome. Gonna put one on left tackle Cameron Devens. He looks insane, and we might need a replacement for Mike McGlinchey. McGlinchey. <laughs> Look at this receiver, round two to three. Deep threat, Jose Beasley, B catching traffic, catching, release, and then A deep route here. Deep threat out of Texas, elite acceleration, great speed, ran a 4-3-9, six cone or three cone drill was number one as well. He's going to be private workout number three. Okay, let's actually check our pick before I get into the draft and get all flustered there. So we have 18, 50, 53, and 61. The commander's 61. Am I tweaking or is that like the Super Bowl runner-ups? But it was Packers... Raiders, I think it was. I don't know. Okay, we got some good high-end picks. We might be doing some trading up here. I guess it kind of just depends on um, the players. I'm going to pause it because I might trade up. <laughs> Actually, no. F that. We're, we're going to run it back. Resume. Now go. Come on. Okay. Favorite, Scotty Church is a top five talent. McIntosh is a top five talent. I got to get Scotty Church at all costs. I need him. I'm sorry. Our guy is just not it, and you guys know that. Are they going to choose? Okay, they choose McKee. I'm going to trade up with the vikings i'm scared i gotta hurry up i gotta hurry up i gotta hurry up uh pick number three trade what do you want javante no 27 to 2027 you want that one i'm just gonna do it do it we're good honestly i don't even know what i really gave up there but it didn't look too bad in my opinion okay our car knows please don't go with my guy is this us? Why does it say Vikings? <laughs> All right, we are going to get, of course, Scotty Church, but then I got to find out where that edge rusher is going. He's number 24, so I'm probably going to have to trade up for him again, but let's go ahead and take our guy right now. We can get two top five talents at arguably the two most important positions in football, quarterback and edge. Could be a big time draft. Scotty Church, we saw him. He's out of NC State, 21 years old. I should have traded my quarterback. That would have helped. Um, Elite throw power, elite change of direction. Great strength, great agility, great acceleration. This dude. Now, this is him. 
this is the guy I want to be the franchise guy. I'm sorry, Atkins, you just did not work out here. You can't throw the ball. It happens, right? Everybody chooses a bust here and there. Scotty Terzo, we're going to ease our pain with him. 6'2", 228, 21 years old, improviser, top five, talent hitting dev as well. 94 throw power, 94 change of direction. Now this looks like a franchise QB. That was not racist. <laughs> I promise you. Okay, our next pick is actually 18. I forgot we had this pick. I'm gonna, I might trade up a tiny bit just to make sure we get that guy because I really want that edge rusher. So who's pick like 14, I'd say? Dude, it's literally gonna be one of the last teams. Who the heck is pick 14? Of course, of course. They need a quarterback as well. I will give you Adkins and... I thought we had pick 18. It's bugging out. They, they accepted it. I'll take it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I traded pick 18, right? I don't even know, dude. I, I went so quick. I was panicking. Pick 14 now. Our guy still should be here. And he is Travis McIntosh. We're getting a top five QB and a top five edge. We have not looked at this guy at all. Woo! First in the 40 elite acceleration there. Great strength, speed as well. Skill wise, B, awareness, block shed, A, power moves, A, impact block, A, tackling. Or is this finesse moves? Only a D there, but B, pursuit and B, play wreck as well. Travis McIntosh alongside now, remember, Montez Sweat too. John Franklin Myers in the middle. DB room is looking amazing. We got a new quarterback. Everything is looking so nice. He's out of Alabama. He is only normal dev. That kind of hurt. <laughs> that kind of hurt, I can't lie. I was envisioning Superstar X Factor, you know, 84, 85 overall franchise guy, next Nick Bosa or something. Okay, pick 21 in the second round now. Only guy we have left here is Cam Peterson, who's around three to four projection. Dude, I'm just gonna go with this guy. There was, there was nothing I like at the top of the board here. I'm too lazy to trade down or trade out of it. I, <laughs> yeah, sure. sure. Wait, th that receiver I had, he's gone, isn't he? Yeah, he was on my board. Dang. Felix Mills, defensive tackle. Zach Allen and John Franklin Myers are the guy, but we need a little bit of backup on that D-line. Hidden Dev out of Stanford, 6'5", 287. Welcome to the squad, my guy. Third round 18, Ricky Scarborough. It's going to be my guy. Backup linebacker, just more def at that position. Normal dev, whatever. Now, this one definitely was not our best draft class, although we did get our new franchise quarterback and Travis McIntosh, who's a 78 overall. Peterson's actually a 75. Holy crap. And even Mills, who was a hidden development, I believe 73 overall for him too. CPU did well later on. Let's check out Charger's stats, and I'm just praying. I'm praying, crossing my fingers that he is over um star development hopefully he's superstar or maybe even superstar x factor accuracy looks really good short 88 already is awesome break sack 83 throw on run 90 83 under pressure there and he's a solid athlete man 94 change of direction 86 agility 86 acceleration i think this guy can be the guy can't it really can't be worse than adkins though dude that brother cannot throw the ball i swear highest rated player in the class was actually travis mcintosh how is he only normal i don't know carius kindle remember i had this guy on my draft board he go he is hidden dev only a star i want to see maybe the the other receiver i had and then the other quarterback this guy divine only normal thank god i didn't look at him i didn't click on that guy at all i can't even lie jose beasley second round 18 hidden dev guy looked like a beast i can't lie i really did want him but we traded all our capital away dang that would have been sick okay we do not have our first round pick this year so we we gotta be good and before i do anything i'm gonna go ahead and review the quarterback right now so we know what he is if he's only a star then i, I honestly don't know actually no i tried traded the guy didn't i yeah, we got to ride with him no matter what. Okay, I'm in. I'm in. I'm sold. We chose him for a reason. We traded him for a reason. Where is he? He's only a star. He's only a star. That is pain. However, it, like I said, it cannot be worse than Adkins, bro. Change up the schemes in the playbooks. You know, we got the new quarterback. We're going to cater towards his strengths. Now, West Coast spread, base 4-3, Buffalo offense, Dallas defense. And you know, we're in year four now, so hopefully that can take us over the edge. We got Riddick as our wide receiver two now. Ronnie Stanley's now here alongside Sykes there, two superstar offensive linemen, which means we could probably move Ben Powers. Guess we could just check out what we could get for him. Nakobe Dean in a seven, CJ Mosley. Now, nobody here is really too crazy. Danelle Applewhite, sure. Malcolm Rodriguez. Who's this guy? Randall Ash, 80 overall superstar running back, 24 years old. I'm just going to take him. That, that seems like a deal to me. <laughs> and now we got this beast as an RB2. This offense should be fire. Scotty Church. 
it all comes down to you my guy and defensively if you guys want to see as well zach allen's inside now we got mills here we got mcintosh who we drafted of course top five talent unfortunately only normal dev though there's depth everywhere this is a good team man can scotty church do what adkins couldn't week seven mid-season point we are six and one okay i don't know why it took me so long to see it but he's him we also got to bring out db <laughs> and it's going to be for marco fowler our safety that we took a few years back to go up to superstar here hold them to 100 or less than 150 passing yards here and it's the Bengals. burrow sucks <laughs> if ratings were based off this current season he'd be like a 70 maybe maybe that might be too high the boys are on fire we beat the patriots by three points the seahawks by three points we destroyed the chargers 42 14 37 to 7 to the cardinals our only loss came away against the rams there we beat the niners and then killed the raiders as well scotty church man contract wise we got drew sanders here john franklin myers marvin mims ronnie stanley of course only a one-year deal for him those are pretty much the main guys we do have a ton of money remember we just drafted a new qb so we could probably splash out and drew sanders wants a bit but he does have interest in joining us back so i probably won't raise it too much and he's glad to stay john franklin myers on the other hand red interest in joining us i'll just bone up to nine mil see what he says he's actually glad to be back and then for the rest of these guys i'm gonna wait till the end of the season week eight against the Bengals, we lose 31 28 there did we get our breakout though he had a pretty quiet game out there come on marco polo chargers inner division they're three and five here we beat him 28 17. isaiah stewart left end makes sense <laughs> oh he's trying to get loose <laughs> He is knocking over, and he's out of the game. Holy, this guy might be a generational wide receiver. He is 6'4", out of TCU. Look at the ratings, elite, and just about almost everything there, despite being 6'4", right? He is the top five talent. We don't have or our top, a top five projection. We don't have a first round pick. I'm going to um, scout him anyway, because if he is, I might try to do some. I'm going to put number two on Chauncey Good. And my third one's going to go on Dom Brown, a receiver. And we end up making the playoffs going 11 and six, a little disappointing in the second half there, but I'm happy to finally be here. Offensive yards. We were fourth in the league with a rookie quarterback defensive. Cowboys playbook maybe isn't it look at it look at this he is the guy this is why we made the trade man I'm telling you Scotty Church 4,363 yards 37 touchdowns 11 interceptions 70 percent completion rate in his rookie year those are unbelievable numbers Javante another beast of a year 1430 yards over five a carry 13 touchdowns can this man go up to superstar already Judy was our only thousand yard receiver though with 1145 there eight tutties for him Riddick was the red zone beast though 13 touchdowns for him even Quincy Wesley the tight end got himself nine there Marvin Mims was all right Javante in the run game or in the pass game huh defensively 17th though not not great Drew Sanders of course leads away for tackles made 16 TFLs for John Franklin Myers and Montez Sweat there and then J JFM also led us in sacks with nine Montez Sweat seven and a half Zach Allen six and a half Dorrance Armstrong did not do much and then interception numbers Greg Lowell with four interceptions there could he go up to superstar that would be nice two for Fowler and Sanders and I have just realized who we have in the wild card round hopefully it's not like what it was in real life please do not lose by 50 <laughs> we beat him 38 31 their absolute um offensive powerhouse of a game i guess an offensive display we got the 13 and 4 houston texas now looks like stroud is going crazy as he is in real life too he looks like a beast man and they just scrape away with the win there 31 28 but you know what i'm happy to finally get to the playoffs and even get a win and with how good of a season we have we should get some nice dev upgrades as well mvp goes to josh allen but how does Scotty Church not get in the top 10, dude? Offensive rookie of the year has to be one man. It is Scotty Church, baby. That should be a dev upgrade. Check out some dev upgrades. Scotty Church is now a superstar development. Quincy Wesley up to superstar as well. Okay, that is very nice. There's a ton of superstars on this offense, including Richardson and Kelly, of course. And we got Ash as well. Not bad defense. Maybe Lowell. Lowell goes up to superstar. Okay, that is very nice. I think that's the only one we got, unfortunately. Bro, this team is sick scotty church playing up to an 85 overall now with morale let's probably work on we need like play action and medium accuracy play action deep accuracy and medium accuracy perfect c peterson coyote peterson <laughs> the cowboys end up winning the ball 25 22 beating out the texans super Bowl mvp goes to lane vander esch marvin mims sadly i think i'm gonna have to let him walk i might trade the house for that guy in the draft why does fowler not want to join us back never mind it's a fifth year option <laughs> but he still doesn't want to join us back ronnie stanley you were instrumental this year into how we played i'll give you all the money in the world it's only a one-year deal 
He's back. Let's go. Let's run it back. And you know what? Even though he has little interest in joining us, Riley Moss, you've been here from the beginning, my guy. I need you. And ladies and gentlemen, we can go crazy in free agency and improve this team. We have 71 mil to splash on to improve this team that won a playoff game last year already. And we got some names here. Eh, kind of. Marlon Humphrey, Batonio, and then... Yeah, never mind. It kind of dies off, but <laughs> I'll probably try to get Marlon Humphrey. Not that he wants to join us at all, but it doesn't hurt to try. Come and get yourself a ring over here in Denver alongside Sertan, alongside Lowell. Hey, why does he not want to join us? Uh, our win percentage. All right, buddy. You know what? We're going to give him a very player friendly deal. I'm just going to go all out for Marlon Humphrey. There's no th nothing else here in free agency, and we're still barely even in his top offers. We're probably not going to get him. Probably not going to do much, in, honestly, in this offseason. And we, yeah. <laughs> Big Kirko wakes up dripping like this. Private workouts, Nick Overstreet is still only 80%. I'm going to do him again. I'm also going to do the corner good again. He looks insane. I want to know his talent. And third one, I'm going to put on Darius Lawson. He looks like a monster at defensive tackle. And I'm going to try to trade up in the draft before we actually get in the draft so I'm not all rushed. <laughs> oh, I should have been doing that a lot sooner. And the Commanders have the second overall pick, a team we've done so much business with. Remember, we, s we gave them Russell Wilson in year one, I believe, and then we got... um. Montez Sweat from them later on. I don't who knows where Russ is anymore. What would you want for the number two pick? PS2. Yeah, no. Actually, one of their needs is a quarterback. Yeah, who was that guy? Is their QB? Mitch Coleman, normal dev, 24, 73 overall. They probably are going to go the quarterback, right? Playing a risky game here. I can't lie. The Packers are pick number three. What would you want for pick number three? All right, stop asking for Sertan. I'll give you, I'll give you my third round pick, a first next year, and then a first in 2029 as well. It's actually yellow. Thought it was going to be a lot worse, to be honest. Okay, a second and a third in 2029 as well. Third round pick in 2028 should. Mm. No, nah, I'm, I'm probably going to have to give up my second this year then. Fourth round pick in 2029 should just about do it. We're sending a whole lot of picks to go up and get this hopefully generational wide receiver. Go ahead and start the NFL draft. And hopefully, I'm praying he doesn't go the two picks before me here to the Browns. Who I say is commanders come on you need quarterback the number two guy in the class is a quarterback they go tackle okay it doesn't even matter then Should, can we trade down again baby no nah, i'm getting a little too greedy overstreet is a top five talent in the class i haven't checked that at all what is that corner he's around one okay well we trade it up to get this guy out of tcu shout out to the horn frogs generational i'm telling you a catch in traffic a release b catching only deep deep route though six four physical Nothing actually ended up being elite, but he did run a 4 4 40. Everything there is great as well. Decent agility. This dude with Judy and, of course, Riddick with Scotty Church now under center. The league is in trouble. Hidden development 93 speed, 92 excel, 90 jumping. Please take off 28, though. What in the world? <laughs> yeah, we just pretty much sold the house to um, go up and get him there, but um, hopefully it's worth it and he takes us over the hump. I think it will. I really do. That's why I did it. Draft recap. And he is 79 overall. That's not bad. We are. It's not generational, but we are still banking on his dev trade, of course. Isaiah Stewart also ends up being a 79 overall. And those two were the highest people in the class. This Quinn guy looked nasty as well. Where's that corner that I had? Also out of Oregon, Sko Ducks. He is only a star. Actually, here was this monster as well. Darius Lawson. This was the defensive tackle. He goes round two, pick number seven of the Bears. I didn't even really check out this guy anymore, but you did see him when I private worked on him. He looked unbelievable. Would have been cool. Not, not a big position I need, but would have been cool. However, I'd rather have our X-Factor wide receiver anyway. And while we're here doing some staff points, I'm going to do the slow. Never mind. I'm going to put 30 here on Fountain of Youth, which is slow rating regression for one season. For one position, we're going to, of course, do left tackle so Ronnie Stanley can slow down. And let's, of course, go ahead and reveal Nick Overstreet, our only hidden that we got. I have, I've never had much luck revealing, you know. I, it usually is always a star. This guy, though... He's still not here, so it's a little anticlimactic. Are you guys ready? Three, two, one, bang. He's a freaking star. I just traded away our entire franchise to get a replica of Devontae Parker. You better come through for me, man. And while that sucks, 
The team certainly doesn't. This team is amazing. Scotty Church up to a superstar dev. Now the skill positions on this team are just out of their out of this world. Honestly, we have depth everywhere as well with tight end running back. The O line is awesome. We even got a little mentor and Kirk Cousins now at quarterback. Defensively, we got this guy last year in the draft. He ends up only being a star, but we got Lowell, we got Campbell, we got a 99 star tan, Fowler, Caden Stearns. The lineback group is still awesome. But it was the defense that let me down a little bit last year. So hopefully they can step up and the offense can just remain the same. What are we near? five now yeah no way <laughs> no way and at midseason we are five and two the chiefs are always ahead of us though dude for contracts we got riddick here randall ash montez sweat why does nobody want to join us back except brian campbell values financials big market no income tax oh shut up riddick what if i just give you a boatload of money that's what I thought. I'm on the fence with this offer but we're real close to something here dude just accept be a team player I help a brother out Jason Tatum. <laughs> and remember, we traded pretty much every pick we had in existence anyway, so um, no need to go private work on somebody. I'm just going to go to the playoffs. Hopefully we get a buy. I don't know. <laughs> that would be nice. We actually just got a buy. What in the world? We are so nasty. Oh my God. We started off 0-2 against the Ravens and the Eagles there. And after that, we went on a roll. Browns, Raiders, Vikings, Colts, Lions. Lost to the Chiefs there in week eight, the one that we were at. But then... Raiders, Chiefs, we beat him um, away at Arrowhead, surprisingly. Packers, Chargers, Steelers, Bears, 55-3. to We actually ended off the year on like an eight, seven game win streak there. 55-3 to is actually ridiculous. Kind of want to check this out. Scotty Church, 308, three tutties, zero picks. Justin Fields, look like Justin Fields. Lawrence Riddick, eight receptions, 159 yards, two tutties. Holy. And it was Danny Barnett, the linebacker we drafted a few years back. Two interceptions that game. I can't believe we just got a bye. I, I was kind of like joking. <laughs> but kind of not. This team is awesome. Offensive yards, number one in the league. But defense, could it? Can it, could it, it, it. Never mind. Scotty Church, 4,647 yards, 38 touchdowns to nine interceptions. And he's 76 completion rate. Are you kidding me? Kirk Cousins mentored you well. What a year, man. That could be MVP, especially with a 14-3 record. Javante, who I believe did not go up to superstar, right? What does it take to get this man up to superstar? 1,400 yards, 4.8 carry, 15 touchdowns. Scotty Church also added in six touchdowns. And we also got double digits from Randall Ash here. Four carry as well. That is why you get it back at running back. Shout out Jason Tatum. Defensively, we were better though. Drew Sanders leads the way. Of course, John Franklin Myers with a double 16 year TFLs and sacks there. 16 TFLs for Zach Allen as well. He gets himself eight and a half sacks. Baron Browning, seven sacks. Montez Sweat, who's kind of the main man, right? Only five sacks there. Kind of an underwhelming year. And his contract is up. So probably not going to bring him back. Four picks there for Sertan and Drew Sanders. Followed with three. Barnett, who got two against Fields. Campbell. And in the wild card round, we got the New York Jets. They end up going 11-6. I'm kind of curious to see who their quarterback was. If I'm not mistaken, it was Jordan Love. And he's up to a 90 overall now. 28 years old. He's just following the dang tradition, huh? Brett Favre, Packers to the Jets, Rodgers, Packers to the Jets, and although way younger than what those other guys, when those other guys moved, Packers to the dang Jets. <laughs> that is so weird, but we should be able to beat them. We have a, we have a better team, 89 overall. They're only an 80 to five. Of course, they got a good offense or they have a great defense. I don't even know. We're in year five now. We beat them 24 to 14. AFC Conference Championship is going to be against Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Let's go ahead and hop in because I haven't seen this team at all. They're an 82 overall squad. Evan Ingram, out of all people, is up to an X Factor. And then they got Sharif Marshall, who's a superstar X Factor. And let's finally hop in and get to watch this team because I haven't seen them at all. We barely even made the playoffs as it is. So got to grasp the opportunity. You know what I mean? Look at Scotty Church. He's the chosen one, T-Law, not you. With your stupid hair. No offense if you have long hair. <laughs> Can the boys rally and come through? We're in Denver. We're at home. We got home field advantage. We got elevation. We score the first touchdown of the game in the first quarter, going up 7-3 to three here. First half, though, pretty low scoring. Still just 73 going into the third quarter. We get the second touchdown of the game to go up 14-3, heading into the fourth quarter. They get... I think they get a touchdown there, but missed the extra point or they were going for two. We're up 21 to nine though. We're chilling, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to the Super Bowl. Let's go. That was so quick. <laughs> and in the Super Bowl, we're going to have, of course, the Dallas Cowboys. They only go 10 and seven though and have an 85 rated squad. Yearly award, Scotty Church. I need to see you at number one. Joe Burrow? Joe Burrow. Ridiculous. We do win our first coach of the year though. Broncos country, let's hide. Nick Overstreet actually, wait. Did I, did I check out stats? I definitely did. I don't remember his stats though. <laughs> Wait, what happened? Did I not check out stats? 
I remember being here. I think I just completely went over the receivers for some reason. Okay, Judy, 1,200 yards, 9 touchdowns. Riddick, 1,200 yards, 5 touchdowns. Nick Overstreet in year 1 puts up over 1,000 yards and gets 14 touchdowns. Quincy Wesley, 8 touchdowns as well, 700 yards. There will round up for you, my guy. I don't I don't know what happened. <laughs> Shout out Brian Sykes. Ooh, John Franklin Myers, bestie line as well. We should get some juicy dev trades here. Scotty Church, maybe Javante finally, maybe a receiver or so. Scotty Church does go up to Superstar X Factor. Javante finally goes up to superstar and look at this nick overstreet goes up to superstar development already of course after winning offensive rookie of the year defensively i think john franklin myers should go up to x factor and he does and he does i don't think we oh we got marco fowler to superstar our safety of course yeah this team deserves a super bowl if i've ever seen it and let's check out this cowboys team as well here in year five now they got two 99s of course cd lamb and micah parsons trayvon diggs who just got hurt in real life which is so sad dak of course odigazua Tyler Smith they got so many good players on this team it's kind of a lot of players that they still have in real life though they haven't really you know blown up anything or made crazy draft picks we're finally here though in the Super Bowl Cowboys Broncos we made the right decision man in going in Scotty Church and letting go of Bryson Atkins that guy was not doing anything at the quarterback position he was holding us back big time I thought I found the one in him but he truly wasn't the one let's go first touchdown of the game B, or is ours it is seven to seven at the end of the first quarter here pretty even matchup so far if i say myself second quarter not too much scoring but we do get a touchdown they do get three points to end off the two minute drill their third quarter second half is on the way after an electrifying halftime performance by russell wilson i guess i don't know <laughs> you ever done anything dangerous let's go at, oh, we were in the red zone one yard we were on the one <laughs> one yard rush for javante williams gives us an 11 point lead it's a, a 27 yard reception for roman walker there as the cowboys are driving down quite nicely already it is a third and eight it is a fourth and eight and they're going ahead and kicking the field goal there with Cade york we got the ball back if we can drive down here kill some clock never mind we just got sacked let's see what our defense can do it's an eight point game still a one possession game if they go for two dak prescott the new lowell how did you that should have been a pick six that should have been the easiest interception of your life and it should have gone back for six that could have potentially clinched the game as well we needed that we really really needed that we got to capitalize on those opportunities bro baby was that riley moss he did the baby and you're too small that is disrespectful third and 12 can dak come through it's wide open up the seam. I mean, what kind of coverage was that? Is Vance Joseph still here? Like, come on, man. That was way too easy for a third and 12. Pollard jukes out a man, gets himself about seven yards. Second and two, Dak drop back. It should be a pick. Oh my God. We should have two picks on this drive. It's still a well. My man's is allergic to the ball. He doesn't want it. He just wants to swat it. He wants to get it away. It's like a hot potato to him. Third and two, big down open through the middle i believe that is shoemaker who's a superstar development now first and 10 inside the 30 dak in empty here that looks like lowell <laughs> second and 10 in shotgun formation dak rolling out to his left does a 180 get sacked it's baron browning the man that we want to develop wanted to develop in year one he was a project and we knew that he was going to be and in year five now he's coming through in the biggest of moments giving me a little flashbacks of vaughn miller in the super bowl against the panthers and cam newton of course it is third and 20 dak prescott to cast for the ghost and do they kick here or do they go for it i think they should probably kick it's a fourth and 20 they still have three timeouts and that's what they're gonna do kick is up and the kick is wide was that wide that looked pretty wide i i, I can't tell was that wide? I think that was wide. <laughs> they just missed. And we have the opportunity to clinch the Super Bowl on this drive alone. Make him use timeouts. Kill the clock with a few first downs. Scotty Church dropping back. And it's a beautiful throw and an even better catch. Scotty Church, 12 for 16, 130 yards. But those numbers, he probably won't win Super Bowl MVP. But as long as he clutches up here and gives us, gets us these first downs, that's all we can ask for. Dangerous ball there to Javante. Second and 10, two minutes and 45 seconds to go. The clock is running out. We're doing a play action. I don't know why we're not running. The ball, please don't fumble. Jesus, Odigazua, man. We should run this out to the two minute warning. Why did we snap it? That's why we snap it. Lawrence Riddick, the superstar wide receiver who we drafted, I believe, in year two, comes through. Maybe in year one, actually. 
That's why we didn't run the ball. That's why we didn't waste the clock anymore and go to the two minute warning because our team knows us up. They know us up, man. Scotty Church comes through when we need him most and with the biggest play of this entire franchise rebuild, we're going to win ourselves a Super Bowl, baby. I'm going to say it right now. Come on. Under a minute to go. We should be good. 24 seconds, 22 seconds. We get the ball after a Montez sweat sack. And ladies and gentlemen, we are Super Bowl winners here in year five, beating the Cowboys 28 to 13. Scotty Church ends up going 14 for 18 for 170 yards, 77% completion rate, but two touchdowns, one of them being extremely clutch and no interceptions. Oh my God, Javante was incredible. Why did we not feed him more? Nine, only nine attempts, 86 yards, 9.5 a carry, two touchdowns. Holy. He had a long of 70. Wish we got to see that. Quincy Wesley led us with receptions with five there. 45 yards for him. Overstreet did his thing. The rookie finds the end zone here. That is awesome. Riddick, of course, the one we saw. Judy, actually only 12 yards in one reception. Did Jason Tatum at a reception? Our left tackle, huh? TFL's two for Baron Browning. Two and a half sacks for him as well. He might mess around and be Super Bowl MVP. And Super Bowl MVP goes to... Javante Williams for his amazing performance. And you know, usually if I get a Super Bowl by year five, I tend to end the videos there. The rebuilds usually go five years deep. I'm going to go one more in this one. Let's try to go back to back. No. I want to go one more year though, man. This team is awesome. We have so much money and flexibility as well. Still, we can keep getting better. Hopefully we can get some people back though. Randall Ash, Montez has no interest at all. Same with Marco Fowler, dude. What in the world? I didn't pick up his fifth year option last year, did I? Oh my God, I forgot about that. We got Jason Tatum back. <laughs> Ronnie Stanley's back for one more. Brian Campbell, one of our very own stays as well. Zach Allen, he's been through it all with us, man. And we're at the peak now. Marco Fowler going up to superstar definitely makes me want to bring him back. We'll bump up the money a little bit. We still got a ton in the bank as well. He's back. And you know what? Randall Ash, why not? He was a beast of a backup running back. And everybody else, I think I'm gonna let Walt Montez Sweat, Burnham, who's been our center for like this entire video, Dorrance Armstrong, Elijah Moe, and Mike McGlinchey. Free agency, we got both the Sweats, Daniel Carlson, Kalijah Kansi, X Factor 83 overall, Kenny Moore, <laughs> a Jerry Sneed. Free agency has been trash. You know what? Let's get the goofball. Puka should be 98 overall. Come on now. We got Jonathan Adams and Jared Goff. Nice. Did we trade all our picks this year? Maybe. Number one guy in this class was Nathan James. 82 overall quarterback went number one overall. Only normal dev. Just thought that was interesting if you guys care. There was also an 80 overall wide receiver that went number three. I guess we could check him out and compare him to Overstreet, of course, who we traded up to number three to get. He unfortunately was only a star in 79 overall. And Hamilton, this, this is what I was looking for. All right, you know what? Not going to play him, though. We got Overstreet. We drafted him. We took him at number three overall. And he, he delivered... A Super Bowl for us, so um, how, how can I complain? I don't know. But dang, that guy is sick. <laughs> did, did we just miss the playoffs? I'm pretty sure we just missed the playoffs. Yeah, what in the... <laughs> how does that happen? I didn't change anything. We only lost a few pieces here and there, but you know, the core was still there. The playbooks and schemes are, of course, the, the, the defense. The defense. Maybe Montez Sweat was our whole team. Scotty Church has very consistently be, been putting up these type of numbers every single season. 43, 4,400 yards, 35 plus touchdowns, under 10 interceptions. Once again, Javante kind of regressed a little bit. Under or only 1,100 yards, 4.3 a carry there. Ash only got six touchdowns as well. Judy broke away. It was funny because uh, Overstreet went up to Superstar and Judy was still at Star. But yeah, Overstreet didn't have a great year as well. Only 11 touchdowns for him. But the offense really wasn't the problem. The defense. What happened, y'all, man? 16 TFLs for John Franklin Myers. 11 sacks for him. After that, though, just not much pressure elsewhere. Three picks for Lowell, Sertan as well. Only Those are the only picks we had as well with Sanders and Stearns. Should have just ended the video in freaking year five. <laughs> Went out on a high. Instead, we're going out on the lowest of lows, man. We missed the dang playoffs after winning a Super Bowl. Going 14-3, number one seed, like everything. Fins up. Hold up, now I gotta see if we win the Super Bowl. Okay, well, everything's just going... We got absolutely smoke, but you know what? It's about time to wrap up this reboot. We got our goal. We got the Super Bowl. We rebuilt this team after the dumpster fire that it was in year one and turned it into a pretty awesome squad, man. Starting off with, of course, Scotty Church, who's still just 24 years old, 95 overall with Murano, superstar X-Factor. 
accuracy, throw power is at 97, break sack under pressure, throw and run, exceptional play action, could get a little better, I thought Kirk Cousin was your mentor. He was awesome though, he changed this video completely around, Bryson Adkins was so bad for us. I mean, yeah, look at this, consistently 36, 37, 38, about 4,500 yards there, under 11 interceptions, I mean, this dude was a franchise QB if I've ever seen it. And tell you what, I'm kind of curious now, do I remember where I traded Bryson Adkins? I think it was the Vikings. Maybe not. He's on the Titans now. Is an 85 overall star development, 26 years old. No, we traded him to Tennessee right away then, huh? Yeah, he's, his stats were just so bad. Never reached 4K yards. And it looks like he didn't really improve as well. He put up pretty similar stats all throughout his five years in the league. If we stuck with this guy, we would have been screwed. He just didn't have that it factor. I, I can't explain it. Javante was a beast this entire video as well. Was he, is he only an 86 overall? Did, is he regressing? He is 29 years old now. Yeah, he is regressing. I actually don't know as high as he got. Maybe an 88, I would say. But Javante overall was an animal, man. I hope he can come back and find that form pre-injury because Javante is one of my favorite running backs in the league. Shout out to Randall Ash as well. He was instrumental in that Super Bowl win. Judy, funnily enough, still doesn't go out to Superstar after that year. He's a 90 overall, though. Overstreet, we traded up for. Got us a Super Bowl in year one. Shout out to Riddick. We got very early on and was Superstar right out the gate. Quincy Wesley. The tight end that we got in like round two or round three a few years back ends up going up to superstar 86 overall shout out to sykes who i drafted i believe i was going to trade it for a tackle that year as well but we ended up not doing that because they got chosen and i ended up taking him in year in round two and he ended up being superstar that was awesome ronnie stanley changed this franchise around as well once i signed him the team was awesome quinn miners 87 overall now as well and jason tatum of course defense was never really elite but it, it was still good enough for us to go crazy shout out to montez sweat who was instrumental for us zach allen and john franklin myers were key pieces to this team all throughout this video as well sertan is so dang good that he can't even get upgraded anymore three skill points he's 99 overall x factor um and robbie chosen son <laughs> no, i'm kidding brian campbell was pretty cool for us 82 overall the well developed into a monster 90 overall corner superstar development riley moss stuck around got himself a ring marco fowler who i believe we drafted in year one pretty early i think pick 12 came out only as normal development was kind of disappointing at the time but ended up developing into a really good safety in the league 85 superstar dev kane stearns was solid as well he started throughout this entire rebuild if i'm not mistaken baron browning was cool barnett drew sanders a 92 overall superstar one of the best linebackers in the league now and who can forget the goats of course wayne kelly and my boy richardson back to back picks back to back superstar special teamers come on and ladies and gentlemen that is going to be wraps for this rebuild Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm excited to be back. I know I took a few weeks off. I was so busy, bro. I didn't, I barely had time to record and especially edit, which um, takes the long chunk of these, uh, these video process making. Uh, English, please. You get what I mean though, but we are back. I am excited to be back. I got a ton of videos lined up. Excited to do some more rebuilds as well, especially with the NFL back as well. You know, football season is truly here. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, man, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comment down below the next team you guys want me to do. And of course, like the video. That would help me a lot and help me grow. However, I'm signing off though. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, shout out to Scotty Church, the absolute GOAT. See ya. Be careful though. It's spicy.